May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be all acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and name. Amen. What must I do to inherit eternal life? That has to be an eternal question. I've thought about it many times, and I'm sure all of you have. What must I do to inherit eternal life? Mark has a man coming and approaching him and asking Jesus that question. Luke has a ruler with the same question. Matthew has a young man with the same question. It didn't make no difference who asked that question. Old or young, a ruler or those ruled, male or female, the question is on everyone's heart. What must I do? There was no question the man had lots of money. And having lots of money, he had lots of possessions. Money of itself has no value. It's what you can buy with it that sets the value for it. He had taken well, taken care of himself very well. But he had not taken care of others. He must have had something missing in his life. He, she, whoever it is that has this question. He's got worldly possession, but there's something lacking, and he knows it. And he comes to Jesus and says, what must I do? I can, eternal life is something he could buy. He's bought everything, everything he needed, everything he wanted, he's purchased. And he purchased eternal life. Jesus replied, he said, you know the commandments. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud. And honor thy father and mother. All but one of those has a not in it. You shall not do it. He replies, Teacher, I've kept that since my youth. These are all commandments that deal with relationships between people. And I expect, if you're anything like me, those are the easiest ones to keep. I doubt anybody here has committed murder. We don't steal. We don't bear false witness. We don't defraud. Hopefully we don't commit adultery. Those are knots. The knots are the easier ones. And he's done well with those. He is not inherently evil. Jesus, the gospel tells us, Jesus looked at him and loved him. He had done well. But the question is not what we haven't done. What have we done? He had possessions. He had riches. And he took care of himself. But he did not take care of himself. That goes to the other commandments. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, and thy mind. And he may have been a little lifting on that. Thou shalt not make any graven image. I expect he worshiped his money. And when he was asked to part with it, he couldn't. Because he didn't own those possessions. They owned him. He was bound to those possessions. Then we get to the hardest line, and it's one I have struggled with many times, even though I'm not wealthy. <clears throat> How hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. I struggle with that because Jesus had some people that were probably quite rich, traveling in his band. When 
you read the Gospels, there was a group of women who traveled with them. And they took care of the, the needs. They had money to spend. So I don't think wealth in and of itself is really bad. One of the commentators phrased it differently, which I really think is very happy. How difficult it is for those who trust in money, to trust in money, to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for someone who trusts in money to enter the kingdom of God. That becomes a question of priorities. Who does one trust? People with lots of wealth and possessions tend to be very self-sufficient. If they need something, they go get it. If they want something, they go get it. And this man in this gospel lesson had done just that. But he had one thing he wanted he couldn't get. And that is eternal life. Where do we put our trust? Do we put our trust in money and in possessions? Or do we trust God? God has promised us that if we trust and believe in Him, He will provide everything we need. He doesn't tell us He's going to give us everything we need want above that need. But he tells us, if we trust in him, we will get what we need and promise of eternal life in his kingdom. That's what the man was lacking. We're fast approaching stewardship Sunday. And we're going to get a chance to tell God where we put our trust. He's going to provide for our needs if we trust in Him and believe in Him. He will also grant us eternal life. We have a choice. Do we want that? Or are we going to rely and trust in our possessions? Get what we need, what we want, and not get There are times we get to make choices in life. And this will be one of where we weep for trust. In God or in our possessions. I'm going to pray about that. And I suggest that everyone here.